In the history of hidden movie villains, none is more overlooked than Ginny from Forrest Gump. In fact, this was so obvious to me, I could have sworn more people would have made videos on it. But I couldn't find one, so it has been thrust upon me to do this myself. That's right, I am left with no choice but to be the man that ruins Forrest Gump for you. So if you've seen the movie, you know the story of the Gimp with the Heart of Gold, Forrest Gump. The movie follows his adventures as he stumbles backwards through life into greatness in every imaginable way. From his college football days to being a war hero, a ping pong champion, a shrimp millionaire, and a board member at Apple. He even ran across America for three years as a millionaire Silicon Valley investor without anyone catching on to who he was. A great man indeed. But one thing never sat right with me. Jenny. Jenny is the devil. Tell lies, Adonis Paul. I'm here to drag you back to the pit. Get out of here, Satan. I cast you back to hell. No. I cast you back to hell. So anyway, I guess she was all right as a kid. Forrest's one friend, who proceeds to immediately friend zone the shit out of him and only serves the purpose of witnessing but not reporting him being chased apparently every day of his miserable life and having rednecks bounce rocks off his head. Now, Ginny was an abused child, so we can write off some of her hoe activities later on to that. But the one thing we can't write off is how badly she ruins Forrest's life and takes advantage of this poor disabled man. Consistently. The first time we really get a glimpse of Ginny's dark side is mid-60s Ginny, who we meet in a gentleman's club playing guitar naked. Our disabled friend flexes his new boot camp combat skills and then tells Ginny that he's going to the bloody conflict in Vietnam. Her reaction? Vaguely threatens suicide, tell him to stay away from her, and then she jumps in the first random truck that passes by. Because even though Forrest Gump is going to nom in the morning, her problems are so important. So Forrest writes her letters like every day, which all get returned to. Because nothing's more comforting to a US soldier in the swamps of Southeast Asia getting shot in the ass for your freedom than getting returned to sender stamped on the letters he painstakingly wrote in the rain and under fire to the only person he's ever loved. So Forrest comes back from Nam after winning the Congressional Medal of Honor and runs into late 60s Jenny, Hippie Jenny in DC, where he rightly knocks out her militant hippie ass boyfriend for slapping her around to impress some black nationalists. So now that Princess Jenny has been properly white knighted for, she prances him around DC and has this romantic night with Forrest. Gets this Down Syndrome's baby's hopes up, knowing damn well he's been in love with her since the first day of school in 1955. He fought for her, they stay out all night connecting, and then she ditches him and jumps on a bus with wannabe John Lennon over here. Friend zoned again! So Forrest, heartbroken, proceeds to do badass shit like be a ping pong champion, go on TV, run back into Lieutenant Dan, become a fucking millionaire. And then his mom dies. The loss of his mom must have been fucked up because Sally Field provided him with 100% of the advice and musings he keeps vomiting during this film. So Forrest is out living his life, getting his shit together, and who comes back in the mid-70s now, uninvited, Addicted to heroin and looking for a fucking place to stay. Mid-70s, Jenny. Now, just to bring you up to speed, last we saw Jenny, she ran out of hippies to fuck and has been banging pimps and speedballs in LA, narrowly avoiding plummeting from ledges. It's arguable whether or not this would have been the best end for her. So this bitch sleeps in his house, gets taken care of, uses up Gump's money. Remember, this fucker's retarded upheaves his whole life, and then friend zones him again. Eventually, he asks her to marry him, and we get this line. I'm not a smart man, but I know what love is. So we're done. She shut down Forrest Gump, told him the truth, and now we can just go on with our lives, right? No! She then comes into this virgin's room and takes his precious flower, knowing that he will obsess on this the rest of his life. And then right afterwards, she bails in a cab. And I remind you, this is Alabama, 1972. This bitch had this planned out. She didn't just Uber her way out. So now, knowing she has used him for everything she needed, rest, a place to stay, I wonder where this bitch got cab fare. She gets his hopes up, making him think the one woman he's ever loved has changed her mind, and boom, ghosts him in the night. And this fucks up Forrest so bad, my man runs across America for three years. Shitting outside, sleeping on the side of the road, he's mentally ruined from this woman. I know this scene is supposed to be looked at as him putting his past behind him, but I ask you, is this not a bit extreme? Jenny did this to Forrest. He had everything. 
rich, universally loved, overcame his disability. His business partner is a badass cripple who screams at God during hurricanes. And yet this woman broke him with that ass in just one night. So now Forrest has fame in the 80s, which is a cool thing to have. And he got it by running. And who sends him a letter as soon as he gets done? Fucking Jenny. Apparently, Jenny's been keeping a scrapbook of all his accomplishments since she snapped his mind with her selfish narcissism. And not only that, this hoe, who's literally been fucking her way across America in a drug-fueled haze for the past two decades, has this kid from the sixth sense and says it's his! Alright, now, I'm not a math major, but let's try to work this out. This kid is at least five years old. He's been running for three years. This is not his kid. He started running the day Jenny left. This is not his fucking kid. He clearly says three years. I had run for three years, two months, 14 days. Now, if we deduct nine months, this kid should be just over two. Might still be shitting his pants. This is that hippies kid, or that black pimp, or whatever member of CCR this guy is, but definitely not Forrest Gump's kid. She ditches the kid from the sixth sense with someone while she took off to go and stay in the Gump bed and breakfast to get her shit together. And not only that, she has AIDS. So now, Jenny is dying of AIDS, and after a lifetime of stringing Forrest along when life gets too rough for her, she now asks him to marry her and take care of, quote, his son. Bullshit. But he's mentally challenged, so he does. The only time she gives him the time of day is when she's gonna make a fucking widow out of him and stick him with the child of a fucking drug dealer. And now we have to face an even more horrible fact. Forrest got AIDS. Either she came to his house and slept in his dead mom's bed, married him, and never consummated the marriage, or she gave him AIDS after they got married, or more than likely, she already had it the first time. Frankly, I don't know what's worse giving him AIDS, or to have to go through all this bullshit and raise this kid, and didn't even get to smash. Not like Forrest understands what AIDS is, or condoms, and in the early 80s that disease was a death sentence. So it goes without saying that now, thanks to Jenny being a hoe, the kid from the sixth sense within three years of your picture frame floating feather movie ending was left with no surviving relatives and probably was put into foster care and the Gump fortune seized by the IRS. And this is why Jenny from Forrest Gump is a piece of shit. Enjoy your movie!